Welcome to the Merton Heritage Alphabet, an A to Z of our borough's colourful past. Our next letter is U for underground. Merton is served by two branches of the London Underground Network, the District Line and the Northern Line. The West Brompton branch of the District Line was extended to reach the River Thames at Putney in 1880. With the agreement of the London and South Western Railway, the District Railway sought to continue the line to Surbiton, but was unable to raise the necessary construction funds, so settled on a shorter extension to Wimbledon. The Merton section of the District Line was originally built by the London and South Western Railway in 1889. Under a joint agreement, it was planned to construct a bridge over the Thames and four stations, East Putney, Southfields, Wimbledon Park and Wimbledon. Southfields and Wimbledon Park had booking hall buildings on bridges above the line. Wimbledon Park Station was a small brick building with a pyramidal roof and tall chimneys constructed on Arthur Road in the eastern side of Wimbledon Park. The line was opened by the Metropolitan and District Railway on the 3rd of June 1889 and services became operational from the 1st of July 1889 with trains running over the line from a connection at East Putney to the Clapham Junction and Barnes line. Wimbledon Park still retains its island platforms and original canopies as well as an original signal box. The Southern Railway, successor to the London and South Western Railway, ceased running mainline services through Wimbledon Park on the 4th of May 1941. The line remained under the ownership of British Rail until the 1st of April 1994, when it was transferred to the control of London Underground. Wimbledon Station is now a major transport hub, unique on the network as it combines National Rail, London Underground and Tramlink services. It's also a junction of South West Trains, First Capital Connect and the District Line. The main station opened on the 21st of May 1838 with the London and South Western Railway line from Nine Elms and Battersea to Woking. The original building was to the south of the current station on the opposite side of Wimbledon Bridge. On the 22nd of October 1855, the Wimbledon and Croydon Railway opened the West Croydon to Wimbledon line via Mitcham. This is now the Tramlink route. And in October 1868, the Tooting, Merton and Wimbledon Railway opened a line to Tooting Junction. It was not until the 3rd of June 1889 that the Metropolitan and District Railway opened its extension line from Putney Bridge, making Wimbledon the new terminus for the branch line and providing Wimbledon with a direct connection to the developing underground. Wimbledon station was now rebuilt on its current site for the opening of the service. Steam powered trains on the district line were replaced by an electric service on the 27th of August 1905. Mainline services were replaced by electrified rolling stock around the time of the First World War, with some steam haulage over longer distances. In 1929, Wimbledon Station was rebuilt by the Southern Railway, with a Portland Stone entrance area as part of the construction of the line to Sutton. Two entrances were constructed, including larger frontage, a forecourt and hefty canopy. The design was typically Art Deco in style, including the lighting and five large windows above the entrance with specially cut fan panes. New bridges were added and the platforms were also refurbished. The opening of the London and South Western Railway to Wimbledon in 1838 had a major impact on the development of the area. People could now travel from leafy Surrey to the capital and beyond via link services. This led to increased property development, especially in the area at the base of Wimbledon Hill near the station. Terraced housing was constructed for rail and support workers. New shops and services were also introduced for new residents and the local population grew. The effect was further compounded by the extension of underground services. Wimbledon and the surrounding area was now part of the commuter belt and there was a growth of suburbs with more homes for middle-class city workers. There was more house construction at the top and base of Wimbledon Hill with new shops, services and greater employment opportunities on the railway. It was also easier for people to transport goods in the locality and there was a vast range of new services and buildings constructed between the 1880s and the early 1900s. Before the creation of the Morden extension, the Associated District Railway Underground Group wanted to build a line to Sutton using a surface route from the as yet unbuilt Wimbledon to Sutton Railway in which the Underground Electric Railways Company of London had a stake. The Metropolitan and District Railway had shares in the company and rights to run trains over the line. A plot of land was even bought in North Cheam but was never used and eventually became a sports facility for London transport employees before being cleared to make way for a supermarket. The outbreak of World War I brought work to a halt. 
Through ownership of the Metropolitan and District Railway, the London Electric Railway obtained approval for use of the City and South Western Railway extension. This would have seen the line running on surface tracks on an alignment close to the current Morden South Station. The London and South Western Railway objected to this idea, fearing an invasion of its territory and a potential loss of passengers. Eventually, an agreement was reached between the Underground Electric Railway Company and the London and South Western Railway, enabling an extension of the City and South London Railway to Morden in exchange for the UERL surrendering rights over the Wimbledon and Sutton line. It was also proposed to extend the southern end of the Hampstead line from Charing Cross via Waterloo via Kennington, where there would be links with the City and South London Railway to allow through running to Morden. Powers for the Clapham to Morden extension and the Charing Cross to Kennington link were granted in 1923 and tunnelling work started using a number of working shafts, rotary excavators and great head shields. The line was constructed in deep tunnels. At the height of the work, six large station shields were in use for 18 shafts. There were difficulties at Tooting Broadway where an underground reservoir was discovered. Work had to continue using compressed air because of the water bearing layers. The severe winter of 1924 to 1925 also delayed work, including clearing ground and building car sheds at Morden. In the Dorset Road area, half a mile north of Morden, tunnels approached the surface and an open cutting was considered, but as the area was found to be bearing groundwater, this portion was built in twin concrete tunnels using a cut and cover method. Gullies were formed in the base of tunnels, leading to sumps at the tunnel mouth at Morden and Dorset Road, where water was pumped away. In late 1925 and early 1926, rolling stock started to be delivered by road along narrow lanes to the Morden depot. Morden itself was built on rural land, so more space was available. An open air station was constructed rather than an underground facility, and there was a wide cutting with tunnel portals to the side. Tracks ran through the station onto a new depot south of the station with room for 250 cars and space for further expansion. The seven new stations along the extension were all designed by Charles Holden of Adams Holden and Pearson and were designed to stand out from older building streets and shops. Full size mock ups were created at Earl's Court so that different arrangements could be tried. With the exception of Morden and Clapham South, where more land was available, the new stations were built on confined corner sites at main road junctions in already developed areas. Collier's Wood Station stood at the junction of Christchurch Road and High Street Collier's Wood and South Wimbledon Station at the junction of Warden Road and Merton High Street. Holden made good use of this limited space and designed impressive buildings. The street level structures are of white Portland stone with double height ticket halls with the famous underground, a London underground round all made up in coloured glass panels in large glazed screens. His main focus was on clean, clear art deco design to focus attention on the entrance and purpose of the station building. Ticket halls were lined in white tiles edged in green and black, expanding down to the platforms. Collier's Wood Station had escalators down to two platforms. South Wimbledon was the southernmost station with platforms below ground level. It was originally to, be a, to have been known as Merton Grove, then Wimbledon was added to the station name to add a sense of status. South Wimbledon brackets Merton appeared on the original signage for geographical accuracy, but this has now been reduced to South Wimbledon. All the stations were floodlit and searchlights were placed on the roofs for dramatic effect at night time. Rural Morden allowed Holden space for a different station design. This included a parade of shops and was also set back from London Road to form a deep lay-by to accommodate a bus terminus to carry passengers from suburban South London. Signal cabins were also installed at Morden and power was linked from the County of London electricity supply. The board next extension was opened on the 13th of September 1926 by Colonel J.T. Maury Brabazon MP, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for Transport. The event was partially delayed by the industrial action of the general strike. On the opening day, a special train was driven from Clapham South to Morden, where a reception was held in the car sheds. 15,000 free tickets were issued to local people as encouragement to use the underground service. During its early years, the tube stood isolated apart from the Crown Pub, now the site of Merton Civic Centre, and a couple of rows of old cottages. On the 31st of July 1927, a large garage was opened opposite the station where customers could park a car or bicycle for the day and travel up to London. 
the underground authority encouraged motorists to use the new surfaces by providing space for over 300 cars, 200 bicycles and motorbikes. Petrol car cleaning and light repairs were also available. Theatre goers from Surrey and businessmen were amongst the patrons. By the end of its first year, 500,000 people were travelling from Morden Station each week and overcrowding made life difficult for passengers living closer to London. By the mid thirties, travel on the Morden line was becoming a daily horror. And in 1937, passengers staged a series of sit-in protests when told that a train would be turned short of its advertised destination. Overcrowding became an issue in, in Parliament and the Minister of Transport eventually urged businesses to stagger their working hours. The Northern Line station buildings were designed to allow for the addition of upper floors like many of the earlier central London stations. Clapham South was extended upwards soon after its construction with a block of apartments. Morden was extended upwards in the 1960s with a block of offices. All the stations on the extension except Morden itself are now Grade 2 listed buildings. Even today the tube still has an ongoing impact on the area with proximity to the underground thought to be good for business and local property prices. If you would like to know more about Merton's heritage, visit our Merton Memories website at www.merton.gov.uk forward slash memories. You can also find more information at Merton Heritage and Local Studies Centre, which is located on the second floor of Morden Library.